One of the things that I preach with all of my clients is there is no excuse to set up in a bad setup position. Reason being is it's a stationary position. The backswing, the transition, the downswing, the follow through, it's dynamic. There are other factors going on there, but setup, it's stationary. So we have to nail it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the front on view, work from the ground up, and I'm gonna run you through the personal checkpoints that you can have for your swing to make sure you set up in the perfect position. So let's start with the feet. Firstly, how wide should we stand? Well, that's very personal to each golfer. I like to say, for an iron we want to stand roughly the edges of the shoulders want to line up with the center of the ankles this is going to be a fantastic guide we can use this for say our seven iron if you're hitting a nine iron you might be a little bit narrower if you're hitting a four iron or a hybrid you might be a hair wider but here's the thing we all have different body masses. We all have different shoulder widths. So our stance width does not have to be a one size fits all. It has to fit your body, which is why we use edges of the shoulders, center of the ankles as a great guide. Now, from there, feet positioning, where are we gonna go? Well, lead foot wants to be flared slightly. Reason being is this is going to help us have a little bit of weight shift and rotation on the way through. It's gonna promote some good body movements. Now, trail foot is a little bit more up for debate. Some players like to have it square, so straight on this allows them to feel like they can really set that trail hip back and around really feel that loading happen other players who may be a little bit tighter in the hips might want to flare that trail for out that's left for debate but the lead foot being flared is an absolute must do this is going to promote a great weight shift on the way down next let's move up the body so with an iron, we are trying to hit the ball and then the ground. If we think about the pelvis, we want to be setting up in a position to where at address, we're going to encourage that ball then ground contact. So having more weight on the lead leg is going to promote a low point that's slightly further forwards. Now we don't want to go too extreme with this. So at address, we are going to start about 60, 40. So if I just do that standing up and I just put a little bit more pressure in my left foot, you can see how it moves my pelvis slightly closer towards the target. If you take the belt buckle, you can see it moves a couple of inches is closer towards the target. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to be seeing that the pelvis is a hair closer to the left foot than it is the right foot for a right-handed golfer. Now, when we're talking about spine tilt, again, let's keep this super simple. If I set up with my hands in the same position and then I slide my right hand lower than the left, what happens to my right shoulder? It drops down. So this is why we need spine tilt. It's nothing fancy. It's really just to complement the fact that our trail hand is lower on the club than our lead hand. So then if I build my setup around that, you can see if I draw those lines down from the edges of the shoulders, how the pelvis is closer to the targets touching that lead line. I have a subtle amount of spine tilt. And from there, I look like I'm in a great position to produce a beautiful pivot weight shift and rotate on the way through. So you can see when it comes to the body motion, we can really simplify it down to those key points. Now let's talk about ball position. Ball position is something I see so many golfers get wrong and it's all to do with A, where we position it relative to the body. So what do we use as our reference point? And B, understanding how that ball position is going to affect ball flight, strike and things like that. Now the number one thing I see so many golfers do, especially when it comes to irons, is they put the ball way too far back in the stance. Now this makes sense. The further back you put it, logically, the more you're going to encourage a ball then ground contact, trap it, all of these things. However, it doesn't necessarily work like that because when we look at studies, we can see that roughly the lowest point of our swing is underneath the lead armpit, lead shoulder. Now that is because as we start down, we are shifting and rotating. So by the time we get to impact, roughly it's gonna be somewhere underneath the lead shoulder, lead armpit area. Now, the further back I put that ball relative to that position, you can see how actually the club in that spot is gonna be way higher. So in order to compensate either, I'll have to hang back, terrible for our downswing sequencing, or I'll have to cast my angles out earlier. So actually we wanna position the ball in a position to where we can shift, turn, and just naturally release the club to help us optimize everything out. Easiest thing to do is always use the upper body. So we know the lowest point of our swing is underneath the left armpit, left shoulder. So with all irons, I want you to position the ball somewhere underneath your left ear. Makes it super, super simple from there. As you have that natural shift, turn a little bit of side bend, you can see you return it back to roughly under the left ear. That's gonna give you a good ball then ground contact and it just simplifies everything down. Doesn't matter if it's a nine iron, a four iron, underneath the left ear is gonna be the best bet for you. Now, moving on into the shaft lane, how much shaft lane to have? Again, this is a variable that's left up to debate for every golfer. I like to encourage just a little bit of shaft lane for most amateurs, having the left arm and the club in one straight line is gonna be a great bet. But if you're a little bit more of a fader of a ball, you might have the shaft a little bit more neutral. If you're somebody who likes to draw it, you might have a little bit extra shaft lane. 
Personally, I think a couple of degrees of shaft lean, so feeling like the handle is ahead of the ball or the lead arm and the club are in one straight line is a great sort of reference guide to use and it's gonna set you up in the best possible position. Now, as you could probably tell, I haven't spoken much about the grip. Why is this? Well, the grip is different for everybody. It depends on your wrist flexibility levels. It depends on your club face matchups. It depends on your release patterns. So really grip is something that I'm not gonna talk about in today's video. I have videos on the grip. I'll leave a link up there so you can watch that. But just know everybody has a different grip. Look at Colin Morikawa versus Tiger versus Rory versus Matthew Fitzpatrick. All incredible golfers, all completely different grips. So it's important you understand what grip is right for you. So that's everything from the front on view. As I've gone through, I've written the checkpoints on the screen. All the checkpoints are gonna be down in the description. So now let's start to take a look from the down the line view. So let's now talk about the down line view. And the very first thing that we're gonna start with is posture. Now the whole purpose of being in a good posture is A, to help us create a lot of freedom of rotation and B, set up the right foundations to where we can just pivot, shift our weight, things like that. So I often see people, you know, they arch their lower back, they go too much into anterior pelvic tilt, or they'll be too slouched over this way, they'll be way too close and the weight will be too far back in their heels, or they'll be too far away and you'll see that their armpits are well over or outside of their toes, all of which are going to cause a lot of issues. So let's simplify this down. The very first thing that we're going to do is get rid of the golf ball. I know it sounds counterintuitive but the golf ball can be a distraction in this situation. So the first thing that we have to understand is where do we want the pressure in our feet? And a lot of people say, you know, the balls of the feet or things like that. It can be quite hard to know what actually is the balls of the feet. So the easier way of doing it is just to say, right, we want an even distribution between your toes and your heels. One of my favorite things to do is just rock between toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, and then find sort of the middle ground right there just where you can have a subtle amount of little knee bend right there. And I feel very evenly distributed. I feel very much as if I can turn, shift, do everything that I need to do from that position. Now, key check point number two is how much knee bend should we have? I see players no knee bend. I see players with loads of knee bend. Again, don't wanna be going too crazy with it. Very, very simple is if you stand nice and upright in this position and just soften your knees, you wanna be in a position to where your front of your kneecaps are right over the balls of your feet or ends of your shoelaces, roughly in that position there. Too much and you'll see that the knees will go over uh, the toes, too little and you'll see the knees will still be over the fronts of the ankles. So you want it just to where it's on the fronts of the shoelaces right there. Then from there, you can gently bend over into this position. Now notice when I bend over, my lower back is staying flat. I'm not rounding it this way and I'm not completely arching it that way. I'm keeping it very, very neutral right here. The pelvis is naturally gonna have a little bit of tilt, but it's just gonna be in a nice subtle position right there. And if I draw a line straight down from the armpits, armpits are right on the fronts of the knees all the way to the balls of the feet, ends of the shoelaces, that sort of reference guide. Now, how can we do that all in one exercise? Very, very simple. Grip the club, we wanna stand nice and tall. Again, toes, heels, toes, heels, find that sort of middle ground. A Little bit of knee bend to where it's over the fronts of the shoelaces. Lower the arms and just round forward till the club touches the ground. You can see pelvis has a little bit of tilt. Lower back is flat, soft curve to the upper back. The final check, grab that golf club, shove it into your armpits. And from there, armpits should touch the front of the kneecaps all the way down to the balls of the feet. Now from there, wherever that club it is, is where the ball's gonna go. And that's gonna put me in the best possible position to then have a nice fluid swing. The final thing we gotta talk about is alignment. Now alignment is very, very simple. I see a lot of golfers sort of overcomplicate it. Number one thing is what matters more, shoulder alignment or feet alignment? The answer to that is shoulder alignment. Shoulder alignment plays far more uh, of a role over where the club path goes. If my shoulders are left, chances are my club path is gonna go left. If my shoulders are to the right, chances are my path is gonna go to the right. So what I want you to do is prioritize, A, what shape are you trying to hit? Are you trying to hit a little bit of a fade, a dead straight shot, which is the hardest shot to hit, or a little bit more of a draw. Whichever one it is, if it's a fade for a right-handed golfer, you're gonna set your shoulders slightly left. If you're looking for a relatively neutral shot, you're gonna have them pretty much running parallel with the target. So club face is gonna point at target, shoulders are gonna point parallel left. And if you're trying to hit a bit more of a draw, you're gonna point the shoulders a little bit more to the right. 
In terms of feet, I actually don't care too much about where your feet are pointing. Reason being is because we can change your feet alignment to aid you in certain amounts of rotation. So for example, if you're somebody who struggles to generate depth or rotation in the backswing, we'll have your shoulders relatively square, maybe slightly closed, but we'll drop the right foot back as that makes rotating in the backswing generating good depth way easier. If you're somebody who just wants to be relatively neutral, then we'd get both feet, shoulders, hips, knees, everything in one straight line, getting them nice and parallel. But if you're somebody who struggles with rotating on the way through, maybe you want to hit a bit more of a fade, I'll get everything just a little bit more left. That's going to make rotating on the way through just a little bit easier. So again, you can sort of see how actually feet alignment is something that's a variable that we can play around with depending on rotation, what you struggle with, but the actual key of controlling club puff comes from the shoulders. So there you have it. There is a complete run through of an iron setup position. Quite a lot of information in there, but like I said, I'm gonna put all the info down in the description. So check that out, take a screenshot of it. That's gonna be your checkpoint and that's gonna make it so much easier for you to just tick every single box. And remember, there's no excuse to have a poor setup position because it is a stationary position. If you need a little bit more one-to-one -one help with your own game, I offer online coaching on the Skillist platform. Again, click the link down in the description. And if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe click that bell button so you get notified every single time i post a new video and i hope to see you back here soon